He is a young, very romantic, ambitious, uh, heroic young man at the start of our film who desires to join up for the war. And he falls in love with a young woman and he goes to war. And that changes him somewhat. And, 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 and we learn about him through his writing and his poetry. Game of Thrones, yes. um, Jon Snow, obviously. Yeah. How did this compare to filming that? Very different things. Um, Thrones is a, is a Goliath, and, and, and it maintains a, a real feeling of intimacy, but, but it's, 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 it's a completely different animal from this. It wasn't so blocked in a way, so that, that's the major way it, 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 it differed. I loved both, um, but this was a new way of filming for me. It must, it must be similar locations, the island and then the mud of this one. Yeah, not, not far off. We were mainly in kind of rural towns and cities in, <laughs> in the UK with this one. And, and, and mainly we're in Belfast and sometimes more exotic places like Iceland and, and Game of Thrones. And John's dance was saying it, you hide warmers about your person. Yeah, yeah. None of them seem to properly work. Um, but yeah, Charles, Charles probably stills other people's knowing Charles. What challenges did you face? when filming this? Um, it was emotionally draining at times. Um, and it, it, I, the way it worked out, I had another movie to do, so I had to shoot all of my stuff out in three weeks, which is a, quite a lot to get done in, in, a, in a short amount of time. So it was quite intensive. And um, I, I was sort of playing a, a character in a, in a period of history that I hadn't stepped foot into in a long time. I'd been doing a lot of fantasy roles and a lot of um, period roles, and this was... This was very different, so it was quite daunting at first, but um, I thoroughly enjoyed it, I really did. Uh, hello, my name is Colin Morgan, and I play Victor Richardson. Uh, Victor Richardson is one of Vera Britain's good friends, uh, good friends of Edward, uh, her brother, and Roland's, their mutual friends. And Victor very much is, um, is very taken with Vera, um, but her eyes aren't, aren't really for him, and so, uh, so his, 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 his focus is very much Vera-driven and, 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 and would love for things to blossom, but things don't turn out that way. Why this film? Why this film? For me? It absolutely connected with me in, a, in an emotional and guttural way. The script is fantastic. It's um, hugely loyal to, to the, the, the memoir. And I think everything, it stems from the script. If it touches you in a certain way, then it's the right direction to go. How did you prepare to act as somebody who's blinded during the film? Uh, one of the things I did was uh, I contacted the Blind Veterans UK charity, uh, which I think is an absolutely fantastic charity. I think if anyone, I didn't realise there's so many blind people in the UK who haven't availed of them yet, and I really think they should. If anyone knows anyone that is blind and hasn't, I really urge them to, to contact them. And I did, and they were hugely helpful to me. They, um, they, I went down to their centre in Brighton, and they... Um, they got, I got to interview a couple of the, the, the residents there and they also gave me an actual first-hand uh, blind experience uh, by blindfolding me and taking me in as a resident there and very much treated me like I was just someone coming in. So it was um, hugely beneficial to me and um, it was important that I occupied that headspace before I began filming. An intense film, what did you get out of it? Oh, it's... It absolutely hits home to the importance of living in the moment, living now, not not taking things for granted, understanding that your your time now is important, not 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 to waste the moment. Colin, are you in the craze? Are you in that one as well? I am, yes, in Legend, yes. Yes, it's going to be a great film. I'm really, really looking forward to that. What is Tom Hardy bringing to it? Tom Hardy is bringing and is is bringing. He's bringing Tom Hardy to it. He's he's that's what he you know. He's brilliant. He's absolutely fantastic. He's he's it's going to be such a surprising and inspiring performance. I think and a fantastic script by Brian Helgeland. It's brilliant. Who are you in it? Uh, I'm playing Frank Shea. Yep. My first day with Colin was separate from my first day with, with Kit. Colin and I just very immediately started making each other laugh and being very, very silly and playing silly games. Um, and me sort of slightly taking the mickey out of him for having to be wet for hours and hours on end. Um, and Kit and I, uh, Kit and I on her first day filming went, went for a little pint in the, in the hotel bar where we were staying and, and, and made good friends that way. Alicia, talented. Alicia. Oh, she's awful, isn't she? Uh, Alicia, uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, she really is a, a force of nature and an incredibly generous actress to work with. 
Um, but I think, I, I, I have to confess, I've only seen a, a percentage of the film uh, it's sort of broken up. But I know, having worked with her and been in scenes with her, I know quite how formidable an actress she is, and I'm very excited to see her full performance this evening. You're like the British Rat Pack, you, Colin and Kit. You're the new up, up, upcoming young dude. Thank you for the vote of confidence. Um, oh, well, I, I mean, he's hoping to be put... Um, in any sort of category with those two guys is, um, is, a, is a great honour, so thank you very much. So how did you get on? Did you, did you go through the letters and all that? Oh, I'd love to be able to tell you some awful bit of gossip and that we all hated each other, but no, we, were, we got on incredibly, incredibly well. We, we did our, we, our research was all done before we arrived, but we had a, a period of rehearsals over, a, over around a week before we started shooting, so we had time to explore our characters then and talk about all of the research material during those, those sessions with James Kemp, the director. My last question, I'm going to leave it. Tom Hardy, two words. What, Tom Hardy in two words. I mean, so, no, you've been working with him. What have you been working with him on? Uh, we've been working. We've been working with him. Uh, to, to describe him in two words would be too hard. He's far too complex and talented a man for that. But we've been, we, um, I play his. I mean, one of his lovers, one of one of Ron Cray's lovers. Um, it's a kind of sidekick role in the new Cray's film directed by Brian Helgeland, which will be out next year. He's scary, Tom, in character. The thing in character, he's terrifying, and when he's not in character, he's he's a very lovely, generous, warm chap. What do you hope the audience gets out of seeing this film? Um, I, I mean, what I, what I my, the, the, the thing that was always in the forefront of my mind is that they are a group of real young people, exactly like you and myself would have been at that time. I'm sure we're both a few years older, but that um, the people who watch it realise that actually it could, you know, it, it, it could have been us. It could, it could, it could happen. It could, it could, it could happen to any young person. Well, it couldn't happen to any young person. But do you know what I mean? That there were real people like we are now, and I hope that makes it all the more relevant and poignant. There's not that much in terms of resource about her as a person, but uh, yeah, no, it's quite quite an interesting background. She was, um, they, were, they were obviously very musical, um, and but her, she married into, into uh, you know, Buxton money, and they were quite well to do. And they lived in a place where obviously um, Vera found it incredibly stifling, very, very, provincial and bourgeois and when the character's underwritten in terms of research it must be quite interesting for the artist isn't it yeah and you always make your own story really you make your own logic um, and I think it's um, you know it's an interesting little slice of the history that the domestic world was changing forever at that moment in time that sort of world of leisure and servants and you know was, it's never really going to be the same again um, well, I think, I mean, I think Testament of Youth is a really important historically um, because it's the first real female voice that stands up and goes, hang on a minute, this should not have happened. They, all these young men were sent as cannon fodder and they, they died in a needless fashion. What was it like working with Alicia? She's so scarily talented. <laughs> She's incredibly fiercely intelligent, which makes her a remarkable actress. Well, it's all of our young people. It's about a lost generation, generation that was, that was, you know, in there from 17 up. They were slaughtered of whatever class, of whatever background. It's, it's a film that young people need to know about, you know, or it's a story that people need to know about. And Boris Johnson has only turned up for your film. So what do you think? Yeah, he's just, he's just cycled by. So what do you think? The, the mayor of London has come to see your film. Yeah, I think it's his. Isn't he sort of sponsoring it? I think I think he's sponsoring it. But I'm glad he's he's sponsoring our one. It's a, it's it's. I suppose it's a it's a serious film in a in quite a serious centenary. Well, this is a big moment for me. I mean, to make my first feature and to have it as the centerpiece gala at the London Film Festival, well, it's beyond my wildest dreams. And and it's incredibly important because I want the film to have profile and to be seen because it's, it's just a, it's just a kind of epic story that people should experience. Did you have the patience for filmmaking? Yes, I hope so. You have to ask others about that. But I, I don't lose my temper on set. I believe as a director, my job is really to, to, to be gentle and to guide people to, to performance, not to push them. Why, why a Swedish actress? You know, it doesn't matter to me what nation they are. She speaks amazing English. What matters to me is that she has the qualities of Vera Britton and that she becomes the lead actress in my movie. And, uh, you know, it could be American, could be British. Alyssa Vikander is a big star of the future. There's no doubt about it. Fabulous young cast. I mean, did you feel a bit like you're 
paternal. I felt very paternal. They were, you know, I mean, I felt a bit like a father hen sort of gathering them all together. But they really know what they're doing. I mean, these are, these are the new generation of great actors. And it was exciting to see them develop in the way that they did. And for a lot of them, it was roles they hadn't really done before, like Kit Harrington, to have this big romantic lead in a major film like this. I think he, you only have to ask him. He's over the moon about it. Why this book? Why now? You know, the big reason for, make, for making a film about this book is that I think it has a central message for everybody. It's about be patient. You need, to, you need to give time to find your voice in the world. That she thought she could just be a writer and stay at home in Buxton and go to Oxford and take a year, university education. It wasn't until the tragedy of World War I that taught her about the real lessons of life, the profound experiences that each and every one of us experience about loss, love, heartbreak and courage that gave her the material to be a writer. And that applies to each and every one of us. We really find ourselves once we've lived our lives a little bit. We just need to be open to what life can teach you. How did you make a war film about one person? Well, for me, it's not really a war film. For me, it's a, it's a love story. It happened to take place in a war environment. And, uh, you know, she is, she is at the centre of the film and she's an, she was an extraordinary person. And Alyssa Vikander's made her an extraordinary person on the screen. So for me, it was a love story. This is a story of, uh, that really touched me. Uh, it's a remarkable story of Vera Britton. It's an adaptation of of her autobiography. And it's the story of a woman who becomes an activist, who becomes a writer, um, and who writes uh, this book, uh, determined, to, um, so in a way as an elegy to all that lost, all those lost youths who died in World War I. And I think it is as relevant today as it was when it was first written. It's, um, it's a book about a woman who becomes an activist. I think in these times that is particularly um, relevant and important. And also it's a story of, um, you know, alas, all those lost lives ever since and forever and more. You know, it was the war to end all wars. Unfortunately, um, it didn't. It must be interesting for you not to CGI for a bit and actually see it, you know, unfold in front of you. There was a little bit of CGI. Um, but yes, no, it's wonderful. And, you know, there is at its centre uh, not only a wonderfully directed film, but great performances by uh, young boys, but at its, at its centre, a towering performance by Alicia Vikander, who um, I think is a star for the ages. Gosh, about Paddington. Yes. How's it looking? Looking fantastic. Um, you know, it's coming out November 28th here. It's a wonderful um, adaptation by Paul King, um, and I think will has oodles of heart and uh, much laughter, and I think brings Michael Bond's creation to life in a, a, a faithful but at the same time, uh, modern way. Are you aware you mustn't step on our dreams because we are, we are all up Paddington? I think that's true, and 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 you know I, I I'm obviously very sensitive to that with this book and with 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 the Rolling, you know, with with, with the Potters. Um, there is obviously responsibility to be true to the books or to the spirits, and uh, I I believe that Michael Bond. Um, you know, has been a great supporter of us along this way, and I hope, um, I, I know, will 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 we'll love the film as much as, as as we do. What happened to Colin first? Was he the wrong voice? Colin was brilliant. You know, we began with we began with Colin, and and uh, uh, um, he in fact figured out that he wasn't the right voice before we did. <laughs> he said, "Are you sure?" Um, you know, yes, Colin is brilliant, and we were lucky to have him in many ways. But he, his voice is of a more mature man and uh, his, his dulcet and silky tones just weren't quite right for the youth, uh, for uh, Paddington, who's really meant to be a, you know, a young boy. Ben Whishaw, who uh, is, uh, brings Paddington to life in, uh, in the most wonderful and joyous way.